time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. There's no argument. Rejection hurts. The pain felt after being rejected by a person who is naturally supposed to accept you, however, is an altogether different pain. Why do we yearn to be accepted by those who want nothing to do with us? Let's navigate that today in the R Lounge. Up first, OP looks to their comrades for acceptance. My mom neglected me and ditched me for her new family, so I decided to ditch her as well. Little background of myself. I, male 19, was born when my mom was 17 and my dad was 19. My dad has been in prison for the majority of my life for nonviolent drug charges. My mom got married when I was 10 to my stepdad. Just to clarify, my mom and dad were never married. They dated each other and eventually hooked up and had me. My problems with my mom started when she got pregnant with my sister and then after she had my sister she got pregnant again and had my brother and I became like a ghost she hardly paid attention to me. She neglected me emotionally and I felt like I was unwanted in her life. I didn't matter anymore. As I grew up I continued to try to get her to talk to me but she was always busy. With my brother and sister every family activity they did together she always excluded me. It was always my stepdad and my mom and my siblings except for me like I wasn't part of the family. This is how I came to my conclusion that my mom hates me or she dislikes me. As I mentioned before, I have two younger siblings aged four and nine. One day, my mom comes into my room. She's all dressed up and racing around and I ask if she's going somewhere. She tells me no and I go back to playing on my computer. No later than 15 minutes, I hear the garage door go up, so I race downstairs thinking, what the heck? Sure enough, my mom, stepdad, and my sister and brother are all dressed up and in the truck and I'm standing outside, feeling really uncomfortable. The look she gave me as she jumped into the truck made me feel like I was interrupting her. There wasn't any, oh yeah, sorry. It was just a look of absolute disgust. I don't cry very easily, but something about the whole thing really got to me, and I went back inside and cried a bit, but then got over it. it wasn't the first time. She texts me 10 minutes later telling me they're just going to the park. I don't respond because I would have just worked myself up again. Fast forward, they get home. I was eating dinner and my nine-year-old sister rushes in after my mom super excited to tell me about everything they had done. They hadn't gone to the park. My mom had lied to me, saying they went to the park when they'd actually gone to Dave and Buster's. They also went to get milkshakes and went shopping. I was visibly crushed by it and my little sister noticed I had gotten upset. I could tell my mom was about to start making excuses and making the circumstances my fault, so to keep my little sister and brother from seeing that I excused myself to my room quietly, it super sucks. I've been trying so hard to be a good son despite the selfishness of my mother and her chaotically selfish ways have on me. But once I realized that crap isn't normal, I started questioning our relationship. That we once had I didn't see any safe way out without ending up on the streets broke. 19 years old, unemployed by the way. So I joined the army. It was spur of the moment and she still doesn't know. I can handle it and it's the first decision I've actually made on my own. I cannot tell you how excited I am for basic combat training soon. Sorry everyone, I just wanted to get this off my chest and share my story. Edit. I would like people to know that I don't hate my brother and sister. I like my brother and sister. They also like me. I have good memories of spending time with them. At this point, they're the only thing that I consider family and I hope they understand why I moved away. I hope that when I come back from the army, they will see me as their big brother. I would also like people to know that my grandparents from my mom's side of the family passed away already and my grandparents from my bio dad's side of the family also passed away. My grandmother passed away two years after I was born, and my grandfather passed away when my dad was 15 years old. My bio dad is the only child they had. My mom only has one sister, and she's married with three kids. Her kids are around the same age as me, and she and her husband live paycheck to paycheck, and I don't want to be a burden on them. That's why I never went to live with them. I'll keep you guys updated. For now, that's all. I have seen some of the comments below. Thank you everyone for the love and support. Again, thank you all. Hello everyone. Quick update. June 18th, 2023. Not much has happened. I've been busy moving my stuff out. You guys told me not to say anything to her about me leaving, but I find that really hard to do because my sister is outspoken. Everything she hears and sees, she tells. So I decided to tell my sister I'll be leaving for a job that I was offered. I'm going to tell my mom the same thing if she asks. If you guys have any better suggestions or ideas on how to deal with these situations, I'm all ears. My mom doesn't see me moving my stuff out, but she did notice some of my things missing and asked about them. I told her I sold some of my things to make some quick cash. I just got a little bit left to move out and I'll be done moving my things. Just in case y'all were wondering where I left my stuff, I asked a friend if I can leave my stuff at her house. She said yes. Some of you are probably wondering when I'm leaving for the army. It's on the 23rd, this Friday. Some of you also ask why the army and not the navy or marines or air force. 
My friend who let me leave my things at her house has a grandpa who was in the army and he convinced me to join the army. But if things don't work out for myself in the army, I'm going to join the Navy or Air Force or Marines. Thanks everyone. I'll keep you guys updated. Hey guys, back again with another update. June 20th, 2023. Today, my bio dad called me and said that he got out of prison two weeks ago. He's living in his parents' house. My grandparents, when they passed away, they left their house to my dad. So I went to see him. We had a good conversation. He apologized for not being there for me. I told him if he's truly sorry for not being there for me, he should make up for it by being there for me now. He told me he was going to try his best to be there for me and that he got a job in construction. I told him I was going to the army and he broke down in tears when he told me he was proud of me. I couldn't help it and cry as well. It was a very emotional moment. I told him because he hasn't been there all my life, I'm not going to call him dad just because he's my bio dad. I'm going to call him by his name if he wants me to call him dad. He has to earn it. He told me that is fine. I plan on going back tomorrow and be there for a while with him, of course. It's going to be after he gets out of work. This is my last post for a while. June 24th, 2023. Hello, everyone. This is going to be my last post for a while. I'm already ready to go. I'm here in my biological father's house. My mom doesn't know I am leaving for the army. The only thing she knows is that I moved out of her house and I'm staying with my biological father. I left a note telling her everything about how she treated me, except for the fact that I'm going to the army. I'm going to call an Uber to take me to the station where I'm going to get picked up by a bus and then take me to the army. My bio dad is paying for the Uber in case y'all are wondering. Also, I would like people to know that I forgave my bio dad for not being there for me, but I also told him that just because I forgave him doesn't mean I'm going to call him dad. He has to earn it. So I started calling him by his first name, Matthew. Yes, that's his real name. I could see it in his eyes when I called him by his first name that he was hurt by it, but he accepted the fact that he wasn't there for me growing up. And these are the consequences but I also told him I'd give him an opportunity to redeem himself. Let's see if he really is sorry and regrets not being there for me. I don't know if my mom has read the letter because I'm not there to see her reaction. I did talk to my sister who's 10 years old about me moving out because I got a job. She was sad, but she said, are you going to come visit us? I told her yes when I have the time. She was nine before, but she's now 10 this past weekend. It was her birthday. My little brother is still too young to understand things, so I didn't tell him anything. He's only four after all. That's all for now. Thank you guys for everything. Thanks for listening to my pathetic life. I'll make sure to keep you guys updated if I have time to post. I'm sorry for the way your mother has treated you, OP. You don't deserve that. I'm so sorry you felt so alone. Despite all that has happened to you, you should be so proud of yourself. You're making big decisions for yourself in order to set yourself up for the future. You have your own back. Your mother shouldn't have taken out whatever feelings she had against your father on you. I truly hope that the way she treated you is not your fault. You did nothing wrong. This is all her. And in terms of not calling your bio father dad, you're absolutely right. He hasn't quite earned it yet. He hasn't been there, but it's refreshing to know that the two of you are going to be working on your relationship. I hope he treats you with love and respect. I hope he makes up for all those years that he wasn't around. Proud of you, OP. You're really doing it. Do you have a similar story? Share it with us in the comments below. Next up, dollar signs can't make up for this absent grandparent. Mom gave me a couple thousand and said, she didn't want to be in my family's life. I'm not sure if this is the right place for this. If not, please direct me to an appropriate subreddit as I need to put this somewhere for my own sanity. Brief background. My mother has never been a fan of my spouse. My spouse is black and I'm white. My mother never accepted this. We had various issues over the years. My wife and I have been together 15 years. It all finally hit a boiling point seven years ago and I severed ties completely with my mom and dad. Dad was never cruel like my mother, but she made my life a living hell and he just went with it. A year ago, my father passed, and I wasn't told until a couple of days after it happened. Apparently, he was in the hospital for a week or so before passing. It hit me a lot harder than I thought. My dad and I were extremely close growing up. I was his little buddy, and we did everything together. It broke me when I severed ties with them because of that. It broke me again when he passed. Over the past year, my daughter, eight, has been asking about her grandparents on my side. She was one when I cut them out and hadn't seen either of them since. My wife told me I needed to reach out for the sake of our children, which I did via Facebook. I have none of their contact info, and my mom saw the message but never responded. Cue to a week ago. I get a call from an unknown number and answer it. It's my mom. She tells me that she appreciates me reaching out, but she's not ready to be in my family's life. She feels like I kept her grandchildren from her and caused the rift in our relationship. She goes on for a few minutes and then tells me she sent me some money through Walmart. When I hang up and go to Walmart and pick it up, it turns out it's $2,000. I was expecting it to be very little as she's never been the helpful kind. Why give me money? 
All I want is a relationship for my daughter because that's what she wants. Let's see what the community says. First response. I bet she gave you money because she owes you money from your father's estate. I bet she is keeping a lot of what she is supposed to be giving you. Next person says, the money was probably from guilt. As another person who is in a mixed race relationship, you're better off. If your mom couldn't accept your wife, I'm sure she wouldn't ever fully accept your kids and speaking from personal experience, you're better off with that. If she legitimately tries to come back and be a part of your life, then it's up to you what you want to do. Next person says, this is horrible. My first question would be to your partner. Why would you, knowing your mother-in-law is a racist piece of crap, would you want your child exposed to that? I mean, what is the benefit of sake that is so important that you have to expose a biracial child to a racist? I know this sounds horrible, but given how it was your partner who had advocated for the contact and used the child, then they need to answer that question. Second, what were you expecting to gain? You knew your mother is an open racist, your child is biracial. What did you expect she would do? She then sends you money and guilt trips you because you kept her grandkid from her. Are you talking about that child who is half the race of her other parent, who you hate because of their race? Yeah, I can't effing figure out why would I keep this child away from your racist hands. So how do you move forward? Well, for starters, you need to talk to your daughter in age appropriate terms about the fact that her grandmother is a racist and that is why she is not interested in having a relationship with her. Look, your mother even sent you money to pay for the counseling that will need to happen. Thank you, racist piece of crap mom, for helping us create a child that will not need you and who will grow proud of her race and her place in society. Don't call us when you're old and alone and realize that you need someone to wipe your butt because you can't. Use your money to hire someone. The OP replies, So my partner, bless her soul, is an unfaltering optimist. She believes that everyone has some silver of good in them somewhere. She advocated against me cutting them out of our lives and trying to mend the relationship the best I could even if she would never be accepted. She wanted our children to know their grandparents and make their own choices as they grew up. She was willing to not even be around while I took them over to my parents' house, etc. I never allowed this to happen, but she was willing to do that. I have wanted to sit my daughter down and talk to her, but I'm not sure if eight is the right age to expose her to this truth. How do you tell an eight-year-old that her grandmother will never truly love her because she's half black? What I have told her is that my mom is not a nice person and we don't go around her. I have told her that my dad passed away and he is no longer with us. There's a tremendous amount of truth in the comments. I'd have to agree with the question as why your spouse would ask you to reach out to your racist mother for the sake of the children. Why would you want someone who has disgusting beliefs like that to be in your children's life? I'm not sure it's fair to subject your biracial children to someone who doesn't approve of who they are. On top of that, your mother made it quite clear that she doesn't want to be part of their lives. She clearly hasn't changed. Moreover, the money is definitely guilt money. And to be perfectly honest, $2,000 isn't remotely enough for the damage she's caused. You can't put a price on trauma. What do you make of this? Thank you for following along today. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to share regarding today's content, we want to hear it. See you next time on the R Lounge.